welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very exciting haul for you guys. It's kind of a mishmash of so many things and a lot of blind buys and some not blind buys and just a little bit of everything. So I'm really excited to get into it and smell these because I have yet to open any of them as you guys know so I can ha do like a real first impressions for you guys and we have seven today so without any further ado if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to subscribe don't forget to follow me on Instagram all that good stuff and more is in the description box below and let's get started so the first one is actually a sample I got with part of my order as part of my order um was from someone so they sent me this sample which was very nice and I was very pleased so I will show you when we get to that fragrance there was a discontinued fragrance that I actually bought from another person so she sent along this sample and this is Gentle Fluidity by Maison Francis Kirchon I'd never smelled this one apparently it has blue gender bound or the description is blue gender boundaries it's woody amber, it's got the spicy heat of nutmeg, um, some juniper, and a musky woody core. Now, this is the only one I smelled before I filmed this because I just couldn't help myself and I always kind of smell um, the samples, or I try to. I have to say, it really did surprise me um, with how metallic it got on my skin. I was not expecting that. It's supposedly like woody and ambery and even musky and and it did get a sort of metallic but like in a cold it just smelled very cold on my skin and it wasn't one I enjoyed I only had like a very little short wear test honestly right off first impressions which is what these hauls are I would say and knowing Maison Francis Gershon and everything this isn't one that stood out to me from the beginning I won't be going out of my way um, by any means to get a full bottle of this for sure. Um, it's an expensive niche house, but I'm happy I have the sample so I can actually give it a try. I know there's definitely people who like Gentle Fluidity Silver, so I'll give it a try, but first impressions, just wanna get that out of the way. It got like a very cold metallic on my skin and personally it's just, it's not for me. So we're gonna move along to the full bottles. The first one's actually the only one in a set and it's one I got from Marshalls. I was so excited. It's always a good day when you find Hermes at Marshalls or TJ Maxx or Winners or whatever that equivalent is where you live. So I was very excited and because it was a good deal, I decided to get this fragrance Eau de Merveille, which I'd never got before. I've actually never smelled it before, but I know a lot of people like this Eau de Merveille range and honestly it's never piqued my fancy. I'm not a fan of the bottles. I don't actually like their kind of like lopsided vibe which is not a reason not to get a fragrance but I've just not been really into it and note wise it's never piqued my fancy. Definitely not full price but this was a good deal and for a gift set it comes with the moisturizing body lotion which I really like from Hermes. So this has orange, elemi, lemon, amber, pepper, pink pepper, violet, fir, cedar, vetiver, and oak moss. So if you guys know me, you can tell straight off the bat with those notes. That's not really speaking to me. Um, it's got two peppers. Uh, I'm not even a fan of one. Um, so let's just say I have very little expectations of it. But honestly, looking at the bottle right now, it isn't bad. I don't know what was throwing me off. So let's see. Hermes usually, oh, it doesn't have a cap. You just press down. It tends to actually really work for me, the house. So maybe it'll be a surprise. Oh, okay. It's very, very like bright orange. It, it's kind of like an like an orange, like a freshly squeezed like orange and lemon juice, like squash. I don't think it's that peppery at all. There's definitely like a um, a kind of green or herbalness to it, but it's very light. 
I get a lot of like vetiver and the vetiver is kind of reminding me of some other Hermes fragrances that I've had and I really like. It's nice. I was really worried that it was going to be like spicy or maybe even too green, like too peppery and it really isn't. That's what I like about Hermes. Like even with um, some of their men's fragrances that you think might not be like of interest to you based on their notes. That's what I've really noticed with their fragrances, at least for me. You really have to give them a try. And I, I say this to myself too, because obviously it's been so long since I've just like judged this off of its bottle or its notes, but I have to give Hermes credit where it's due. And really they, it takes a lot for a fragrance to kind of surprise you if you already don't like the notes. If it's like a powdery floral, I'm already halfway in, but this, I'm interested and I really do like it. Okay, so that's Eau de Marvay. We're starting off on a good foot with the full bottles. I'm happy with that. And I'm sure the lotion will be nice as well. Then, okay, you guys, this was very, very exciting for me. The next one's from Fragrance Buy and I noticed on their website that they had a whole bunch of new fragrances from this new house um, that they didn't carry before. And I was intrigued, partially for me, but partially for you guys, because I know you are all a vanilla lover and I am self forcing myself to become that. And I'm always on the search for what my dream vanilla is. So I saw this line of fragrances called like the house is La Maison de, de la Vanille. Um, and there were a whole bunch, there was maybe like six or seven, all their fragrances. And you guys, I, ran, I read every single note for every single one and I was torn. I was torn between this one, which is supposed to be um, kind of like a, a powdery gourmand vanilla that's very tropical. Um, and then the other one that I was torn between was a grapey vanilla. But, and you know I love a grape and it had grape like full frontal. So I was, I was torn because this one had the best reviews out of all of them, but that one did have a grape. So. I ended up going with Vanille Divine des Tropiques, the tropic, uh, the tropical one. They're all eau de toilettes, like I said. And this one lists amber, jasmine, tuberose, hyacinth, vanilla, heliotrope, gardenia, and jasmine. In the base as well, they're all tester bottles, so they're a little bit more inexpensive. It just says tester on the bottom, but that's it. I'm very intrigued, you guys. I really hope this is great. Um, it will cause me to buy more from the line, obviously, but if it ends up working, first of all, I can tell you guys in case you've been curious, but I'll have to go back and get the, the grape one. So let's see. Ooh, okay. Okay. Wow. I really do like it. There's definitely like a, um, uh, like a powdered vanilla sugar to this. It is tropical smelling, but it's not, I don't want you to get the wrong impression where it's, it's not like sunscreeny and it's not like tropical in like a drinks kind of way. Um, it just smells like tropical body oil. Um, it's very reminiscent of, this like body oil from Dominican Republic when I visited years ago. I really like this. This is a great one to take on holiday. It's just reminding me of the Caribbean in general. Okay, yeah, I really do like it. It's definitely got a powderiness to it, but it's not too in your face. It's tropical, but it's not sunscreeny because I know that's not everyone's vibe. And I really do like it. I am very intrigued. I'm definitely gonna do wear tests on this because it is an eau de toilette and it is, it is staying pretty close to the skin, I will say. I'm now very curious about that grapey one, but it didn't have as good reviews as this one. Honestly, this one was like very hyped up and the rest were kind of so-so or actually not hyped up at all. So I can only really recommend this one. As a first impression, Vanille Divine des Tropiques is is a good one and I can't wait to try that one out. All right, so now we get to the next one. The next one is actually um, by Estee Lauder and it's Modern Muse 
Eau de Parfum. Now, some of you may remember I got the Modern Muse Gloss or something um, a while ago, and I'd never tried that one, but I was like intrigued um, when I got it for a good deal. So this one's the original. And again, I've never tried this one that I can remember. And this one has um, a lot of notes and a lot of repeating notes. So it has jasmine twice, mandarin, lily, honeysuckle, flower petals, woody notes, tuberose, musk, patchouli, patchouli leaf, amber, and vanilla. So I'm intrigued. I was like, I'm always, not always, but it's been a while that I've been like interested in honeysuckle scents. I got a lotion that is very, it's like pure in your face honeysuckle. And I've been like dabbling wearing it. Um, I didn't even mention it's because I'm born in June and apparently honeysuckle is the flower for June. Um, and I will say it's a very, very, I love a floral, but honeysuckle really isn't kidding around with how strong it is. So the lotion's the strongest, um, but I've been kind of dabbling. I would love to like that note a lot. I haven't gotten there yet. So I know this is just like one of the notes and maybe this will be so hidden that I can't even smell honeysuckle, but I was intrigued that it was in listed. Ooh, I definitely smell some. It is nowhere as strong as the lotion though. So it's definitely more wearable. This is a very like classic mom scent in my opinion. I mean, I'm interested to see how it wears because I feel like this is the kind of scent that is going to change a lot in its dry down or even in its heart. Right now it's very floral forward, I would say. It's like jasmine, honeysuckle, and it's like very even rosy. Like there's a lot of florals. It kind of smells like a bouquet of so many different florals. And it's sweet, but it's not sickly sweet at all. It's a very like classic smelling. I could imagine like someone's boss in like an office smelling this way. It's yeah, it's definitely very classic smelling and safe. Like it'd be hard to be offended by this. It kind of, it literally smells like a bouquet of flowers, unless you don't like a bouquet of flowers, but yeah. Okay. Modern Muse Eau de Parfum. We will have to come back to this one. Definitely intriguing because I want to see if it ends up changing in the base and maybe warms up and gets a little bit, I don't know, ambery and vanilla and musky. But right now it's just kind of reminding me of very classic mom or businesswoman scent, which is a little bit safe for me personally, but we're intrigued. We'll stay with it. Then you guys, we get to the unicorn. So I mentioned, as you saw in the title, there is a unicorn fragrance and I've found it. So this one came very recommended a long time ago. I don't even remember if it's been a year or two or however many years, but I was intrigued. I saw, oh my God, I'm forgetting. I'm going to put their name here. Who was it? I have to look up. It's someone on YouTube for sure. Um, yeah, I, I forget. Someone on YouTube put, talked about this fragrance and was like, this is my favorite powdery fragrance. And it just clicked. I don't even know why, but I was like, this is it. This is the one I want. I absolutely want it. And I'd never heard of it before and I looked it up and it was pretty expensive. And I was like, I mean, one day this will be like on a website that I'm more familiar with and it'll be easier to find and it'll be for a better deal. And let me tell you that day is today because the fragrance in question is Tente de Neige by Lorenzo Vioresi Firenze. I got the 50 ml because that's the size that's available on Fragrance Buy and I could not be any more pleased, you guys. I have been on the hunt um, and I'm so excited. So it comes with a little, I, I literally just opened the box to make sure it's in there because I've stared at photos of this for so long. Here she is. I'm pretty sure I've only ever seen like the larger bottles, but I don't care. 50 ml is good enough for me. Um, it's from an Italian niche house, obviously, um, in Florence, I believe. And listen, if someone tells me this is their favorite powdery fragrance, 
my ears perk up because I'm interested. I'm interested. Um, so this lists powdery notes. It lo lists rose three times, ylang ylang, jasmine three times, tonka, floral notes, heliotrope, musk, and sugar. So like one note is better than the next. I'm very excited. This will be a letdown. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, if it does not blow me away, but I'm excited. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. Straight off the bat, I was not led astray. This is stunning. It smells very soapy. It smells like, like a crisp white powdery artisanal Italian soap almost like the kind of soap where you, if you like lift it, it almost feels like a little bit chalky, but it's not in a bad way, in, in like a fancy artisanal way. It's very powdery rosy, like very powdery rose. So I can see, I don't at all agree with this statement, but I can see if you are not someone who is head first into powdery scents, you might view this as being a tad dated or not even dated. Like I think some people use the term like grandma fragrance. I hate that, but I can see what they mean when they put those words together. That This might be that vibe. This does not smell modern to me, but it does not smell dated in the way that like Chanel number no. five is a classic fragrance, but it's, it's dated. I love it. Like I'm already heart eyes emoji dying over this, but I just want to say like, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't go for this unless you were into it, but it, you were into powdery fragrances, but just in case you're wondering, this is not a baby step first powdery fragrance for someone. This is near the end. Um, it's very clean smelling also. Like I feel like it's the muskiness is very clean. Um, so it leans more of like a soapy powdery rather than, I don't know, like it's not a makeup-y powdery. So maybe that helps you guys. I really like it. There's definitely a rosy powderiness to it. Tant de Neige, like I think it's such a beautiful name for it as well. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. I'm definitely going to be wearing this a whole, whole lot. I also feel like this is going to last a while. I'm not sure, obviously, these are first impressions, but this is one, it just makes me want to like take a shower, be in like a really beautiful like terry robe, and just smell like this. Like this, this smells rich to me. It smells like old money fragrance. That's the vibe. So that is my love. Uh, that's Tant de Neige Eau de Parfum by Lorenzo Viareschi, Firenze. And I was not led astray. I love that one. Okay. Ooh, that was great. So then we move on to one that I mentioned on my channel I would never get. And here we are. So that's Narciso Ombre. Um, I do have many Narciso fragrances. And because I had the Poudre and the Rouge, I was like, you don't need Ombre. And I've smelled it before. This is the only one I've smelled before. And I wasn't going to get it, but when I was traveling in Portugal, I smelled the Narciso Ombre Neroli, like the new one that came out. <clears throat> and that one I was like, oh, I mean, this is just, it's like way less of the Narciso musk and just like a little bit more amped up on a Neroli. And I was like, come on now, they're just releasing, like, this isn't even necessary. And so... <laughs> to stop myself from getting a fragrance that I didn't even want, I got this one, which is even more similar to the ones I own because I'm crazy. Um, and I can't explain it, but here she is. I love the color. We will remind ourselves of the scent because it's been a while. I still feel like, and I feel like it's the nail in the coffin for me to say this, but I still feel like I personally won't get the, Eau de, the Narciso Ombre Neroli, Personally, I just like, I have a lot of Neroli fragrances and 
it's amped down on the Narciso musk, which is my favorite part. And I just feel like it's a little bit, it's unnecessary personally. And I think a lot of people agree to have ombre and neroli. It really is just one or the other. And between the two, I prefer the regular ombre. Um, I don't want more neroli. I want this original ombre. And honestly, I don't even regret getting it because now smelling it at home, there is definitely a difference. I can do like a full video on my Narciso cubes and just fragrances if you guys are interested because I know I get a lot of questions on that and people, me included, have always been like, what are the distinct differences? So if you're interested, I'd be happy to do that. I might have done that already, but I, I can do a, a second one and include this one. I really do like this. This is, it's a nice one. So this has frangipani, ylang ylang, white flowers, musk, amber, cashmere and vanilla, and cedar. There's definitely like a frangipani tropicalness to this that does not exist in the poudre. The poudre is kind of like straight up powdery. And then um, the rouge has like a kick to it and less like less so powdery and just has like a more of a kick to it. And this has a tropical like frangipani, ylang ylang kind of tropical floral side to it, which I do like. I also have the eau de toilette and the, the black cube one, but anyways, I really do like this. The From what I remember, the neroli one just has more neroli and less of the musk, like I said. So I really am into that one. And now knowing and having smelled that one, I'm not, at a loss to see which one of the two I should get because I really do think you really only need the one. But the Neroli one has a really beautiful frosted bottle, which might do it for some people. And then finally, the last one. Oh my God, you guys, I am beyond excited to get into this fragrance because it is a long time coming. So this last fragrance is is a special one. It's the fragrance that I bought from someone else, like I said, because I have yet to kind of find it on these discount websites and um, I heard it's getting discontinued. It's so hard for me to keep track of which Maison Lancomes are staying and which aren't going. So I guess this is kind of like a second unicorn, but I was so happy because I've added another Maison Lancome to the collection and this is Orange Bigarade. So it's one I definitely wanted on my list. I kind of want all of them if I'm being honest, but this was one that was higher up on the list. And this lists bitter orange, orange, bergamot, orange blossom, black tea, jasmine, pepper, vanilla, sandalwood, and benzoin. Let's just open this up. Oh my God, I love the bottles. Here she is. And it's those old bottles that I like, like the second version, which I know now they're on the third version, but I'm pretty sure every time I buy um, a Maison Lancome, all of you guys that own them all and like which ones you guys own, comment in the comments below and tell me, and I love that. Um, so definitely keep that going. Okay. I kind of sprayed odd because it's... Oh! Okay. That one threw me... That one's interesting. This is way more unisex than I was expecting. It's definitely got, hmm, it's definitely got like a bitter orange, uh, lemony. Yeah, it's got like bitter orange lemon. It's got a tea scent to it that I wouldn't have necessarily thought black tea. It kind of reminds me of like my Thé Bleu by Bulgari, like it's got a lighter tea scent, but it's definitely prominent. It's interesting. It's definitely, like I feel like I want to spray a little bit closer to my... I like it, don't get me wrong, I like it, but it's so many of the Maison Lancomes like have a sugary or a candied side to them or they're straight up syrupy. And this one isn't that at all. I feel like it's very citrus heavy and the orange and and lemon and bergamot are are quite prominent and it makes it very unisex, much more than really any of the other ones I've I've owned. Hmm. I like the tea in this. I definitely am gonna have to play around with this. It's surprising. 
but I do like it. It's making me interested in wearing it and I feel like it's a, it'd be a nice one to wear in spring and summer. Ooh, okay. I'm liking it the more I smell it. So very happy. This is why I don't end up filming that Maison Lancome video for you guys because I just know myself and every time I get close to, I'm getting another one. So it's a, it's a series I'm gonna wait or it's a video I'm gonna wait until I feel like I've reached a point where I'm not really gonna get any for a while. Okay, so we gotta put these in order and my goodness, there's a lot. So I don't even, I don't even know where to start, but I will say sample aside, I'm just gonna put the sample aside. This is not a sample I'm interested in getting a full bottle. 99% of the, 99% I won't get a full bottle. So we can just say gentle fluidity silver is not my cup of tea for the price and the scent. The six full bottles, and I would say I like all of them. This was a pretty successful haul. Nothing has really disappointed me, but in sixth place, it's very clear to me that I would put Modern Muse. It's just, it's just like a very classic, simple scent. It's pretty floral heavy. It just smells like a bouquet, which is nice, but the more you have in your collection, the harder it is to impress you um, or to just have something new, which goes without saying. So that one, um, I'm not disappointed. It was like a free with purchase, so why not? But I personally would say like, unless you're looking for something like a safe, like a beautiful floral or a gift for someone and you just want something really safe, it's a nice one, but I wouldn't go out of my way. Then now this is, gets hard. Because honestly, I, I'm really liking all the other ones pretty similarly. Um, and it makes it, whew, it makes it hard. Okay. So I would say in fifth place, I would maybe put Vanille Divine de Tropique. Right now as I'm smelling them, this is already very faded on the skin. I mentioned before it is sitting close to the skin and even more so it's faded quite a bit. I have tried a lot of fragrances, so I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. It might impress me. And I'm, when I wear it more regularly with how I would wear with multiple sprays all around my hair and clothing, it might be more impressive. Scent wise, it's definitely there. I'm intrigued, but performance wise, it hasn't impressed me so far. And it's a house I'm not familiar with, so you never know. Then between two very similar vibes that I'm getting, I will, they're very close, but I'm gonna give a slight edge to the other one. So I'm gonna put Eau de Merveille um, in third to last. I really do like this one that it has impressed me and I'm very interested in doing a wear test. I had very low expectations of this and not only did it surpass that obviously, but I feel like there is there is like a brightness to the citrus that I'm really into and the vetiver in it is be really beautiful as well. Then in third place, the one that I gave the slight edge to, they're both citrusy, but I'm just a little bit more intrigued with Orange Bicarade. It's got the T-note, it's a little bit unisex. I, I like it. And honestly, Maison Lancome more often than not is very, very impressive to me. So I think when I wear it on its own, it's gonna be even more impressive and I'm gonna be even more interested. Then in second place, I will go with Narciso Ombre. I love this, you guys. I don't know what was keeping me away. I think just smelling it in stores the way I always did, it just seemed so similar because I was smelling all the Narcisos together and that's not the best way to smell them, I think, because they are kind of similar when you smell them that way, but there is a distinct difference in this now that I'm smelling it on its own and I'm, I'm really happy to have it and I'm happy I went with this and didn't get pulled into the hoopla of the new release with the Neroli. I genuinely think this is a better match for me and a better scent overall. And in first place, I mean, it had to be the Ton de Neige by Lorenzo Viresi. Firenze, it is just... It's a stunner, it is powdery, it is yummy. I cannot believe I've been without this for so long and it's it's already making its way mentally into my top fragrances of all time. Like, I adore it. I'm so, so happy to have that one. 
So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this huge haul. This was a really great and successful one for me, so I feel like I'm beaming just talking about it. Let me know in the comments below which one of these fragrances you've tried or that you'd like to try. I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you next time. Bye!